easier if I do it this way. Staying in your line that you've created with your liner. Also, you have some pretty legit lipstick color, so whatever your signature color is, just apply what I'm doing to that. So I kind of smudge in the liner on the edges and then use the flat or wider. So that's my lips. Um, one other product that you can get that might be helpful if you like it, if you don't, not a big deal. Um, I have a plumping gloss um, that sometimes I'll use. Um, obviously it's not going to be a huge difference, but, um, sometimes I will just take a little bit and really draw the attention to the center of my lips. I won't go all the way to the edges because gloss I love that it's trendy and I love that it's shiny. I hate how sticky it can be. Um, and again, like everything we're doing here is highlighting features. So we're highlighting, highlighting, highlighting um, features that we want on camera to stand out. And then we are kind of muting stuff that we don't want to stand out. So when I was putting that under here, um, the brown, the lighter brown in my contour kit it's really just not erasing just toning down um some people will take the contour also with their brush and kind of go up here along their hairline if they have a really pronounced widow's peak um but i really think contouring is just depends on your face shape um and how angular you want to look I could no more do all the crazy contouring that people do all day, every day. Um, it would just drive me insane. Plus, I don't like doing this and then having my makeup come off in my hand. That's why I personally love powder. Also, um, the dry based in, um, like contours and highlighters and things like that, as the day goes on, you won't need to touch up as much with a powder because you aren't putting something wet on your face to begin with. So when that oil starts to seep through, um, you'll kind of just be able to quickie brush over it and move on. Whereas if you're using a lot of liquid type ingredients and blender and contour and blush and everything else, you're just creating more and more moisture. Um, one other thing you might find helpful is a mattifying powder that goes on clear. Um, I know that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but um, you can use like a bigger brush um, if it's hot or humid out. Um, I don't do this in the winter. I, I rarely have a need to, but like in the summer, especially if I have like court dates and visits and all that kind of stuff where I have to look like a grown up. Um, Beauty Counter makes Beauty Counter makes one, but um, I'm there it's not like a random product that nobody makes um so it's white in the container but when you put it on and I use a bigger brush and follow my contouring line that I want to keep so loose 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 that's even too much to you know kind of knock it a bit on the side of your sink so that's just very little and with your powder, you can follow the line of what you've already defined on your face. Because obviously putting powder over color um, isn't going to work too well. So just as you can see, I'm putting it on and you can't tell that it's white because it just absorbs what's underneath it and dries or dries. 
but you get the point, clear. Um, and just since we're here, since you might want to do a little bit of your forehead, it's up to you. Um, I don't really do it because I have bangs, but um, if you wanted to, take your little blush and you kind of just trace your hairline a little bit and it kind of makes your forehead a little less big. Um, if that's something that bugs you, I think you're gorgeous, but also cameras can be evil. And I'm doing this with the darkest color, especially because it's up by my hair. Um, kind of filling in. And if you want to get crazy, you can even um, do like a little bit higher on your nose. But I, I find like a lot of contour tutorials um, to just be too much. And I think it's what works for you. So if you want to contour your nose and not anything else in your face, then do that. Um, but I think it just really depends on what you need and what you're filming. Also, if you do your nose and you've added your highlight, you know, right here, you can take a powder in the same color as your skin and kind of just blend on the side. Like so. And this is all way more than I would do. I'm just showing you in case it's something you wanna do. Um, and then if I find anything that I don't want shiny throughout the day, I use my mattifying powder. I'm just showing you because it really can't even see it so that's my I'm gonna be a grown-up face and let's see if I have any other tricks in my sleeve real quick oh I know I was gonna show you so I'm in the middle of growing my lashes back out after I stopped using growth serum so if you want a little more va va voom um and you don't want to go get extensions every two weeks you can do this and I'll show you this trick real quick. Okay, so I have here just a strip of lashes, um, Target, Walmart, CBS, Rite Aid, whatever, floats your boat. And if it's daytime or not, you know, something I wanna go full throttle on, but I'm wanting definition, I, and I didn't, um, they make little individual, like, Tufts, like you can get individual little pieces, but those are hard to work with if you don't know what you're doing. I don't. Um, so what I'll do is I'll cut maybe little eyebrow scissors or nail scissors that are clean. If you use them on your nails, clean them before you do this. Um, and I'll cut like maybe a third off. And so you just have a little bit and then I have, um, just a tube of glue. I don't always like the glue that comes with these, but that's sort of up to you and your skin sensitivity. And Alex actually showed me this trick. So you take your glue. It's hard to do holding on. Okay. Take your glue and apply a strip of the glue and you want it to dry clear. Make sure it's the kind that dries clear. Um, make a strip on your hand, like so, and then, okay, you're gonna run just the strip part through the glue. It's a lot easier to kind of just dab it and move it side to side and wash off the excess later. Then you're gonna put it on the outside. I'm gonna have to, let's see. It's also a lot more manageable in a little tiny section than um,
Okay, so press it and make sure it's and that sort of gives, okay, so if you're just doing the outer third of your eye um, and you can kind of press your lashes back up like this to put them back where they were when you curled them. Also, I would have put the lashes on before the mascara. Um, so if you're doing the outer corner of your eye, what's happening is this little tiny line right here with the liner, you're also drawing up and out, which is helping create this illusion. You're continuing this line here. And so from far away, it just looks like regular lashes, but up close, you can see you've added a little. So what you're doing is just continuing like elongating the cheekbone with the illusion of the lashes. Also, if you have lighter lashes, like my mom is a complete toe head, um, she has like white lashes. So if you have lighter eyelashes um, or they're like a little bit thinner, like mine have gotten, um, this adds a little oomph without a complete set of falsies. And like I said, you can buy the Ardell or Duo or whatever individual little wisps if you're good with tweezers. Um, I get frustrated, so this is how I do it. Okay, I did both sides. It's really hard to do and show at the same time. And then I just, ideally, I would put the false lash before the mascara, curl mascara. Um, be really gentle so you don't pull it off. But you can see it creates a cat eye without being a cat eye, drawing up your angles and making this look like line, line, line. And that is how Samantha looks like a grown up. Um, I'm gonna try to hopefully edit all these together for you and um, send you like my little movie later. Love you. Hi to the boys and give quite a hug for me. Okay, bye.